The trouble with old steam locomotives, whether the big ones or small ones like these, they're usually very dirty and very badly worn by the time I get them on the bench. This is episode 2 of the series and it's looking at the meter made. There are many problems with this engine from what I can see initially, some of them major, some of them are minor. This is a relatively minor problem. It's a leaking blowdown tap on the water gauge. Is it fixable? Well, maybe. Before I start messing about with this homemade water gauge on the engine, it's worth remembering that a brand new, professionally made one is around £25, I think. My logic tells me to just change this water gauge for a commercial item, but for the purposes of the video, I'm going to mess about with this one and see if I can seal the tap. Here is the tap, and as you can clearly see, the end of it is a bit mangled up. The tap is quite nicely made. The principle is, as you tighten the tap, the threads force the point a bit into the hole and stop it leaking. I've remachined the point a bit to see if I can get it to seal. I really don't think this is going to work, but I'll give it a try. This water gauge is a bit ugly, and it's definitely homemade, and look at the nut at the top, I don't even think it's the right thread. You can see how it's distorted the top water gauge fitting, as the incorrect thread has been forced in there. I applied some compressed air to the boiler, and as you can clearly see, with the tap open, a lot of water is coming out of the blowdown hole. And now, when I close the tap that I've remachined, it's still leaking. Maybe I should clean up the face. This is a D bit. By the way, I'm only doing this as a bit of an experiment and a bit of a laugh, really, to say what you should not do. Just buy a new water gauge. I used the D bit and it cleaned up the port face inside the actual valve. And although it leaked a bit less, it still leaked. Please don't write in and tell me how to do this job. I'm just playing about, really. I'm going to scrap this water gauge and fit a really nice new one. The clack valve below the water gauge I'm going to change also because it's an old one. And old clack valves are made of brass, they can de zincify and break. So I think I will preempt any problems by replacing the clack as well. In this clip, I've opened the valve to empty the water out of the boiler, and it's all running into a plastic tub underneath the back of the engine. What about this cylinder at the front? It doesn't look too good to me, it looks very rusty and quite pitted. Here's a magnified view, which also tends to confirm the fact that it's fairly badly rusted. It's possible to clean up a cylinder if it's in this condition. This cylinder does not appear to be very badly pitted. It's rust build-up on the surface. Here's the piston, and this doesn't look very good at all. I spoke to Jackie at Blackgate's Engineering and asked what type of piston rings are normally fitted to a meter made, and Jackie said that a meter made uses cast iron pistons of one and a half inches in diameter which are fitted with cast iron piston rings. What I'm doing at the moment is testing the intensity of the rust using a piece of Scotch-Brite. I've rolled the Scotch-Brite into a tube, and it's making an impression, not much of an impression, but it's showing me that most of the rust is on top of the cast iron. Another quick look at the piston tells me that it's slightly under an inch and a half in diameter. This is not a problem because the piston doesn't need to touch the cylinder, but the rings do. More about the piston rings later. This is the slide valve, and as I rotate the wheels, you can clearly see that the valve does not move the full extent of its travel. And that's because the mechanism that moves the valve is broken. Here it is. Look how much slop there is on it. This is a piece of flat bar with a piece of round bar pressed into it, and the round bar has become very loose over the years. A meter made from Blackgate's engineering is the 060 version of a sweet pea, which is 040, and the valve gear on a sweet pea is very different to this. I'll find out more about this when I get the drawings from Blackgate's engineering when I go over there. So what else is wrong with this thing? Here's the underneath, this is the firebox, and the good news is the firebox is 100% dry and not leaking at all. If there had been any leaks in the firebox at this stage, I would have just abandoned the job. But luckily, the owner of the engine said that it had a current boiler certificate anyway. Time to look a little closer. This is the rear axle, and this is the worst axle normally because it's underneath the fire, and the wondrous combination of an oily axle in an axle box, mixed with copious amounts of ash from the fire, makes excellent grinding paste. 
so the rear axle generally wears the worst of all, but in this case the centre axle's also worn, but not as bad as the rear axle. Also the rear axle is going to wear more because it's driven by the connecting rods. These are not the connecting rods, these are the coupling rods that couple the wheels together and these are really badly worn. Now here we have a bit of a problem, I'm concerned about this. Steam locomotives, whether the big ones or small ones, have the wheels quartered, so the crank pins are at 90 degrees to each other. And there are various factors that make this a problem. The main reason being that often the wheels are not quartered correctly on the axles, therefore the crank pins are not at 90 degrees to each other. Sometimes the frames can be out of alignment, sometimes the axle boxes can be out of alignment. There are many reasons for a coupling rod not to rotate smoothly. The quickest fix, if your wheels don't go around properly on a steam locomotive and the coupling rods start to bind, is to bore the bushes oversize so they just rattle about on the crank pins. Pretty much like this. So is the reason for this just wear and tear? Or are the wheels not quartered properly? The more I watch this clip, it seems to me to be fairly obvious that there's been some metal removed from the centre bush. And to make it worse, this is a knuckle joint, and I can see some natural play between the knuckle joints, but the play between the main bush and the crank pin is totally excessive. And having said all that, the wheels rotate very smoothly, very smoothly indeed. So if I put this engine back together, fix the wonky valve gear, I'm sure it would run okay. More about this in a future episode. This is the hand pump. I'm treating it to a drop of lubricating oil before I start testing it. And it's good news with the hand pump, when I move the handle, the ram goes back and forth in the cylinder. That's good news, this looks like it doesn't need any attention. I can't speak for the valve chest, and looking at the valve chest, it's a bit bizarre. This connection here is normally the water inlet, which should come from the tank. But instead it goes to a check valve or clack valve on the boiler. And unless this is a very special upside down valve chamber, I'm puzzled by it. On the right hand side of the engine's frames is this. It's a heavy duty bracket that I presume once held a crosshead pump, which is no longer there. I'd like to move now from the meter made to the speedy to look at the problem with this. Presuming that I get the job, I'll be working on these engines one at a time. Also, I still have to finish off the Hogwarts castle. I'm not going to do anything with this speedy yet though until I get the drawing, so I can see what the arrangement is with the piston valve. As I said previously in the first episode, I can only move the wheels about this much. So there is something that is jamming both the piston and the piston valve. Even with the piston valve disconnected from the valve gear, it's still not movable. And that's it for this episode. I thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.